Hi, this is Marcus Pulis. I've got my friend Chad Lemoyne. He brought a special guest with us, Nico from the Hotep Nation. And uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit of a different subject. But before we do, don't forget to hit that bell icon, subscribe, go to the store, grab yourself a shirt. I got to stand up for this. Look at that. Grab that son of a bitch right there and, and have that at your house. So, <laughs> so do all that. And uh, remember, we, uh, Aquarian Anarchy isn't just started for um, politics. We want to talk about a lot of different things. And tonight we're going to talk about spirituality. But I wanted to, and particularly the spirituality that I follow, which might be shocking to those of you that have only seen the political stuff that I've done, uh, because I don't have, I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Jew, I don't have any, I'm not a Muslim, I'm a freak. <laughs> so, uh, so there's that. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand it over to Chad, and he can tell you what happened to, to bring Nico on as a guest. So Chad, right. take her away. Right, right. So, uh, so Nico is in. We, we have a, a, a big uh, group chat with all the folks uh, associated and affiliated with uh, OTEP Nation and our, our conference that we were supposed to have in May that got shit canned by this whole corona nonsense. <laughs> and um, anyway, so Nico is cool. Nico greets us every morning with, you know, it, it started off, it, it's had different iterations, but it started off as <laughs> great rising, you beautiful motherfuckers. And, uh, and so, you know, it's a, it's always a, a very pleasant greeting from Nico. And so, um, after our last episode, I shared it in the chat and there were a few people who, who actually watched it, watched it all the way through all two and a half hours of it. And Nico was one of them. And he like, uh, he, you know, complimented us on the show and everything. And, um, and then he also reached out to me, uh, off channel directly and we started talking so we had like a two hour two and a half hour phone conversation on uh on friday or saturday whenever that was yeah absolutely. and we just talked about all this stuff and and i told him about our conversation that you and i had after last episode because we we did a two and a half hour episode after we talked for probably 20 minutes before the show started and then we did like a two hour non-recorded off the air episode um where we got into a lot of the spir spirituality stuff and I was talking to Nico about that, and, he, and, uh, and he's like, "Oh man, I wish, wish you guys would have recorded that. I wish you, would, you know, we could, I could have seen that." And I was like, "Why don't you come on and talk about it?" So here we are, and I'll, uh, I'll introduce Nico and let him. If you got anything you want to, uh, to, to share with the, with, with the group about uh, hey, how you got yeah, here and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, man, it's been a journey. <laughs> uh, so you know, everybody has the little woke moment. Um, me, it was like twenty. 18 when my heart had to get broken so uh but it's been um through the time of growing uh everything that I started to like realize in is is that uh and this is like strong amongst the black culture is like it's like spirituality you put God first and I, I didn't really always rock with that until like I got older and started to see um like my grandmother, she was a testament. Granted, she doesn't follow, um, she, she's a Seventh-day Adventist, but the praying aspect always came through and showed what it's done for our my family. And so um, while seeing that, I've always wanted to know like, okay, well, what is um, our, or our origins? What, what are our origins? So it made me, do more deeper research into where black people came from, how they got started and where the confusion starts. And that's where I found Hotep. And he was breaking things down politically. And I was like, huh, this guy's making a lot of sense. <laughs> and so um, with that being said, now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> with two white dudes. And I'm yeah, looking probably whiter than I've ever looked before. This light is like, it's, it's either had this light on full blast without the shade on it or like it, makes everything blurry because you can't see me so uh, who knows me and Marcus Chad, you might have been black in your last lifetime <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Dude, if i wasn't black in my last lifetime somebody done <laughs> fucked up <laughs> when, when they're raising me i'm telling you why <laughs> so so to dig in well i know i'm blacker than sean king so there's that <laughs> <laughs> so, so to uh, dig in a little bit my spirituality is these days largely based around what people term Afro-Caribbean religion, to be broad, um, largely voodoo, um, but includes Santeria, Kimbanda, Umbanda, Candomblé, and a variety of other kinds of spiritualities from around the uh, 
the the Caribbean ish. Um, I have I, and, and what's weird is I'm a white dude, right? I'm I'm about as I mean, I, my whole lineage is like all German. I mean, I, yeah, voodoo meant like Viking helmets and <laughs> you know shit like that to them. And in voodoo, there's a huge um, focus on ancestry, and I do get into that a bit. But I see ancestry as being a little bit broader. And I've also studied a bit about um, like African voodoo from West Africa. There's a, there's a particular book called The Mark of Voodoo, where a, a, a black woman goes over seeking out voodoo, particularly in Africa. And it's her journey and what she learns about those things. So I've read all this stuff. But yeah, my journey- are taking notes. Oh uh, yeah, you already know. I know, huh? Right. But my journey <laughs> actually starts with witchcraft and Wicca and and I looked into Gnosticism and ceremonial magic and all this stuff. And it brought me to voodoo in a very odd way. Um I met um a woman who was from New Orleans, and to be clear, my voodoo path um is from New Orleans specifically. Though so, you know, I'm influenced from all over that um the I, I was um, like blessed, if you will. It, it, it wasn't really an initiation, but I was blessed by a guy named Lou Martinet from New Orleans, um, who also comes up to, to Indiana relatively frequently. Um, but anyhow, um, the, so it's very New Orleans based. And I was confirmed in, in his tradition uh, several years ago. It's probably, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago now. But before that, I met a woman in Bloomington. Her name was Rose. She was a black woman from New Orleans, and she practiced Wicca. And I was like, "Why are you practicing Wicca? You're a..." And she, by the way, she her her major. She was going to IU, um, in the College of Bloomington, which I lived near Bloomington at the time. And I was like, "So," and and, and her major was in Creole, the language spoken in Haiti. And so, <laughs> like, when she got a job, she, as far as I know, is still a professor in, uh, not Haiti, but the, uh, oh, the, um, oh, the other country, and in, in, I can't remember the... Oh, uh, Port-au-Prince? No, 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 the country that Haiti is half of Hispaniola and the other one, the other Oh, side, oh Dominican Republic, The I'm Dominican sorry. Republic, thank you, the, oh, shit, it escaped I, uh, me. So anyway, she, she was, as, as far as I know, a professor of Creole in, in, so anyway, I was like, why have you not checked out Voodoo? <laughs> you know, it, it seems like to me, you should be looking into Voodoo, black woman raised in New Orleans, interested in magic. Why haven't you done that? And she goes, you know what, I might just do that. And I said, you think? So at the time I was doing- Somehow when we, when we bring up Hotep to people, it doesn't quite go that way. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> it does not go that way. They're like, yeah, that's a good idea. I should look into that. They're like, fuck you, get the fuck out of here. That's not so, nice. <laughs> so, so what I did was I, she went and looked up a bunch of stuff. And, and at the time I was a ceremonial magician, which what you do as a ceremonial magician is just as fun as voodoo, a little bit more light and more organized and no drums, no music no fun, and, but you call archangels. And so I wasn't really all that afraid of, uh, of the, the magical stuff. And she said, can I check this out? And I said, sure, let's do it. And so she didn't really get possessed. The, the gods in Haiti or in New Orleans are called Loa, um, which uh, in, but in Africa, they're actually called voodoos. So that's where the, the, the term comes from or uh, spirits. And so she got different during the ritual, I wouldn't say that she was possessed by a loa, but she was definitely different. And she told me that the loa had something for me to do and that I needed to look into them. And I'm like, okay, have you noticed I'm white? The, the white guy, you know, and they were like, she was like, I don't think it matters. And I'm like, I think, okay. I think you're there to make up for Whoopi Goldberg having- Right, uh, yeah, yeah, she sucks. In her, in her body. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, and what's funny is- It's the balance thing now, right? Yeah, yeah, well, in, in our life at that time, we knew a black guy that was into like Teutonic, uh, like Germanic Viking stuff. So this black guy walking around with big furs on and horned helmets, looking like, <laughs> looking like bunnies. <laughs> with the, you know, the Valkyries and whatnot. So anyway, so that's how I kind of got introduced. And race mattered to, to, to several people. I met another guy, so it wasn't the only thing that hit me and why I started looking into voodoo. Um, but I met a, a, a guy who was um, uh, 
a Santero, he, which is a priest in Santeria, which is from Cuba, very similar to Voodoo. And he has the same kind of situation. Hey, man, let's hang out. Let's do some craziness. So we did. And again, totally unrelated, had never met Rose. Rose is long gone. This is like four or five years later. He tells me that the, the, the spirits, the, they're called Orishas in um, Santeria, wanted to me to do something. And so I was like, okay, these guys are stalking the shit out of me. I might want to look into them. Mm -hmm. So I did. And I still don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. But um, around 15 years ago, I pretty much dedicated my life to finding God through the Afro-Caribbean uh, system of spirituality. And so there's my story. That's how I got there. Which one now? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's so you were breaking down. Um, there are multiple derivatives or derivation, whatever the word is. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. voodoo, yeah. um, not voodoo, but uh, you said there's Santeria, there's voodoo, and there's, and there's isn't there like something called hoodoo? And um, like granted, voodoo and hoodoo are two different things, right. but um, there are different types, if you will. Um, do they do those African Caribbean? Um, what you call it, religions? Did they at all re resemble the same? Are they the same in any way? They're the same in a lot of ways. Um, they, they all come largely from three different regions of Africa. Um, the Santeria and uh, Candomblé and Umbanda, uh, which are Brazil, the last two are Brazilian variety. Um, they come from the Yorubic portion of, um, of Africa. Like it's in West Africa and there's different areas in West Africa. So they, they come from the, the Yoruba mm -hmm. area. They're, they're the Yoruba tribe. And, and, and to be clear, we're being broad. There, there's a lot of different like different kind of tribes and areas that come in, but this is broadly where they came from. And what became voodoo came from Dahomey, um, which, which is a, a, another area of Africa. And those, when, when they were bringing slaves over to the United States, um, the, the central islands that the, the, the Dahomeys went to largely was either uh, Hispaniola, which is, which is Haiti, half of that is Haiti, or they went to New Orleans. And, uh, and it's a relatively small region, so it only got a couple places, where um, mm -hmm. Yoruba, which is actually a little larger of an area, went to um, Cuba, um, to Jamaica, to uh, mm -hmm. Brazil, and to those kinds of areas. And then the third region that gets influenced and is really minor isn't actually all that West African. It's from the Congo. And the, the Congo traditions, um, kind of, there's some that kind of show up in, in, uh, in, in Cuba and some that show up in Brazil. But the Congo traditions are a slightly different variety. When we think of, of when, when Hollywood talks about voodoo, they make it out to be this big bad thing with, with zombies and all this craziness. And voodoo dolls. Right. right. <laughs> And a lot of those traditions actually aren't voodoo. They're Congo. Um, a lot of the negative, now the zombies are a voodoo thing and we can right. get into that in a minute. But, um, but that's where the traditions came from. And right. with, with uh, the Congo, you wind up with two primary uh, sects of, of a voodoo-ish uh, religion. One of them is called Palo, which actually means sticks. And they're seen as the bad guys in uh, in Santeria um, because they're willing to do things like kill people. <laughs> and then in, uh, the, in Brazil, you wind up with Kimbanda, which is the evil variety of Umbanda in, in, the, in that area. Now, personally, I work with all of those. I, 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 I don't believe in like this, this, this is good and this is evil. I think that- it's polarity. Yeah, it's polarity. Well, I, I believe that the, the polarity isn't as clear cut as people mm -hmm. would like you to make make it out to be. Like most people, when you're talking about politics, for instance, um, most people aren't, like when you say, are you conservative or are you liberal? Most people are somewhere in a spectrum. And right. with, with good and bad, I think it's the same. And I, what I have found myself by working with, and I and particularly work with uh, Kim Banda, which is like the evil of the evil, they're really bad. Um, but in, they're synchronized right. with the devil. Like a lot of the spirits, when, because what happens when the slaves get brought over is they want to, to you know, not get beat up and <laughs> even want to live their life, but they also want to maintain some of their cultural heritage and their beliefs. 
So they, they, they don't really see like a difference between say, you know, a saint, for instance, or, or even Jesus. Jesus can become very easily Obatala uh, in uh, Santeria. And so these spirits for them are the same. So they start worshiping African gods as, uh, as, as saints. Mm -hmm, right. And so, but, so that's what synchronism is. It's when you take an African god and you start looking at these, these the archangels and saints and oh, all the stuff that Catholics have and applying African identity to them. Well, in Kimbanda, they, um, they mixed, if you will, um, the, the devil with mm -hmm. these African energies. So you wind up with a spirit right. called Exu and, and, and his wife, whose name is uh, Pumbagira, and there's a variety of those. But one of the things I want to bring up, and one of the, the big focuses of why I like that particular kind of uh, spirituality, though I, I practice more voodoo than I do Kimbanda, um, is um, uh, before we get on here, we were talking about black magic. And right. remember, these are the bad guys. Well, those, when we talk about magic, um, it, it, it would take hours and books to, to really get to a lot of this stuff, but in um, magical history, there, there's, there is no reason why voodoo should be demonized any more than any other magical practice, including the practices of like uh, Pope Honorius, who, if you go look at his grimoire, he has a magical grimoire that he is credited to have written, where he calls the devil. It is, <laughs> you know, and this is a pope, but he's, he can do his thing because he's a big white guy and a big hat. So when people say black magic, people think that means evil. It does not mean that. It means people of African descent. It means black skinned mm -hmm. magic, a particular kind of magic. Black you, magic, okay. Right, yeah, in that, that black magic. Okay, and this is again, generalization, you know, but uh, you know, black people have more of rhythm than most white people do. They, um, oh. yeah, I know, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so, so yeah, in, that's in, in the roots. You can't get mad at that. That's fine. in the roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there, man. You got it. So, uh, believe me, I wish I had more of it. Although I'm a drummer and I can do my own. But, but anyway, they, um, the, the, the particular style of magic that uh, Black people did was particularly frightening to the white people. And the reason right. is because they're loud it's empowering and it has and here's the big one this is the big thing this is the walk away from voodoo this is the thing you get that white people didn't want you to get because you can't get it in a church and you can't get it at a synagogue and black people could get it and that was direct communication with a spirit of god and I'm not talking mm. about, I think I wow. feel something. I'm not talking about, I might have, you know, I've been in Wiccan circles where they're like, the wind blew a little bit more. I think they're here. In voodoo, if you don't know they're, that they're there, you fucked up because they are <laughs> yeah. going to be there. They're going to possess someone. They are going to possibly change physical appearance. And they're damn sure going to act different, walk different, and talk different, sometimes knowing other languages. Mm -hmm. And that direct connection to God that they could not do they also could not suppress. It wound up being the driving force of, of the Haitian rebellion against the colonial powers because they, yep. they were so empowered by their belief system that they overthrew, they were the second ones to do it, they followed the United States and they overthrew a bloody dictatorship that was enslaving them and killing them. There is a, a Loa called uh, Erzuli Le Rouge, and Urzuli is a, a goddess of love. Urzuli LaRouge is not. She is a very pissed off woman. And she, in voodoo, they, many people believe that once you, um, if you die well, you can become a loa or a part of a loa or you, your spirit becomes like more. Intertwined with it or something like Correct. that. Correct. And Urzuli LaRouge was a person who fought against the, um, the, I believe it was the French, and they, was... they went to kill her. They, they proved that they, she, they had chopped her head off, and she killed two people in the time that it took for her to die after chopping her goddamn head off. <laughs> is this that is where woman... zombies come from? Huh? Is that where zombies come from? Or the fear of zombies? Yeah, because I... Yeah, because um, 
I also, I'm sorry to cut you off. I remember uh, uh, when learning about um, the, 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 uh, the Haitian, uh, what you call it, uh, history, is that um, the tenacity that they got from the empowered spirits and all that adrenaline pumping through your blood, um, they, they, they got scared. And so once they got kicked off and booted, um, everybody was like, yep, they made a pact with the devil. Everybody remember it. Voodoo is a pact with the devil. And so mm -hmm. that's where the negative connotation just lingers with it. And um, wow. there was this guy, I, my cousin sent me a text of where it's repeated um, occasions where he just talks bad shit about the Haitian culture and voodoo. Mm. Yeah, yeah and, and, and that's common. That, the, the, again, you know, I'm not trying really, and, and I never have been. I, I found the Loa because I found a direct connection of, to God. And, and, and frankly, they just wouldn't fucking leave me alone. The, mm -hmm. These Loa wanted to be part of my life. And I've never, you know, have I had like, do I, have I ever given a damn what somebody's color of their skin was? No, but I've never been particularly interested in African culture. I've just never, it's never been something I was all that interested in. But, um, what I have found is that throughout throughout time, white people are terrified of empowered black men. Terrified. Yeah. And, and this isn't to besmirch anybody else. This isn't to say that, like, for instance, Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't good and did what he needed to do. I'm not saying that. But they feared Malcolm X a hell of a lot more than they did him. And the reason is because that was a powerful black man, and they saw him coming to power. And the, the white majority, because the, whether we like it or not, white men have been in charge of the world for the most part for, for thousands of years. And they did not like this empowering religion. And, and they're facing it now with Islam. They didn't like this empowering religion that was not in their control. And so they had to stamp it down and make it as evil as they possibly can. And I believe that it is rooted in racism. Mm -hmm. So can I, can I play uh, can I play a little devil's advocate on the uh, stuff with the uh, the, the, oh, the spirits the spirits kind of taking over and everything because uh, all right so like uh, I'm Catholic and um, and there's like there's like charismatic Catholics and there are there are like uh, Protestants who do this sort of thing too where there's like speaking in tongues and stuff and I've been I've <laughs> seen some of this stuff go down and there's some stuff that I've seen that I'm like you know what like that's that's like legit like that's they're like it's genuine. And then there's other things where I've seen like people like um, either predict stuff or like heal people or, you know, that sort of thing too. And then I've seen a whole bunch of other stuff where I've seen people like, because it's seen as like a sign of something to be revered, a sign of prestige, a sign of like, you made it, you know, like you, that people fake it to get that. So have you seen that sort of thing? Have you ever seen and had to kind of like call out some bullshit where, so I guess I'm not really playing devil's advocate. I'm just asking, because you know, I think a lot of this stuff is, there's a lot of congruity. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what, the, we talked about this a little bit on, on Sunday when we were kind of prepping for this. Um, I was out in my, in my yard just kind of sprinkling uh, some weed and feed in the yard before it rained so that I could, uh, I'm trying to kill some stuff in this new yard that we have. Um, and while I'm out there, it's quiet. And I'm just with, with my thoughts alone. And I just start thinking about this stuff because, Nico and I had talked a few days before and you and I had talked earlier that week and I was just kind of going through this stuff in my head. It was on my mind because we were, we were preparing for that little setup call. Um, and I just started thinking, you know, like there's not, there's not all that much difference between like people and their religions and people in their languages. Um, because it's, it's all, we're all just culture, baby. We're interpreting, we're interpreting the physical and the spiritual realm through our own eyes and with our own kind of, you know, biases or whatever that we bring to it or, or what we've learned, our learned behavior, our learned um, ideas about things. And so a lot of times I think what I, what I find most productive is instead of, because I think that some of that stuff is, is by design. So like, you know, whether you believe in uh, Satan or some other evil spirit or something like that, like I think that in the world of spiritual warfare where evil is trying to prevail over good um that it is a very effective and productive device to cause miscommunication division and to push put people in a place where rather than look at this stuff through the lens of what do we have in common and how can we spread love 
and appreciation and joy together. Instead, it's you're not going to heaven because you don't believe what I believe, or you're going to hell because you don't believe what I believe, or all this other stuff, or you know whatever whatever the case may be. And so that I think a lot of times some of that stuff like that like we, we talked about last week, Marcus, after the after the show, fear versus love, and there's so much of of that when you when I start to that's why when when all this uh, coronavirus stuff started to come like when they're laying on the fear that thick and with all the stuff that's going on right now the fear is at like peak performance and it's 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 designed whether you believe that like people are conspiring to make this stuff happen or if you just believe that evil spirits are conspiring to make this happen you know with whichever way you want to 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 to, to slice it we as as a humanity and as spiritual beings are much better at creating like the the kingdom of heaven on earth when we are working together and loving one another than when we are looking at each other as the enemy yeah absolutely so i started that off by like saying hey have you seen some of the stuff that's bullshit but like really like i i i, I kind of wanted to, to bring it back together because i think that sometimes that fear of like not being accepted kind of comes into play too where like let me let me pretend to be like but what it is is like there, maybe there's a, a fear of like what i don't i don't fully understand this i don't know if i'm really if i really believe this enough so let me fake it till i make it or whatever the case may be um and uh, i think some of that comes from just people being afraid rather than like embracing the the love and opportunity and and joy that that is waiting for them yeah so there's a lot I to think break that um Wow. Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead, Nico. Nico. Uh, Nico. I think that um, that's basically life. Um, when um, it comes to love, love means that you understand them. Understanding, that's true understanding. Mm -hmm. That little kid don't get that love in that basement when it's all dark. <laughs> so, you know, he runs upstairs because he doesn't know what's around him. He's just right. fearful. That's the ignorance. It's just all of ignorance. Once you're informed, you can't be ignorant to the fact. Now you're either being blatantly an asshole or you're just, you, so it's just like, it's always coming back to information. Information, be it via history, be it, uh, be it via your body or anything of that nature, spiritual or anything. Once you get rid of the information, therefore you can create the narrative. Because the imagination is a powerful thing, a super powerful thing. They can run away with you. <laughs> yeah. So I think that um, when it comes to understanding, um, when it comes to just understanding of, in general of people, it's things like this, platforms, platforms like this that allow us to explain and express ourselves. Um, because look at it, Chad, you have a different religion take on my man Marcus opposed to me I'm just out here I, I just <laughs> I just believe in a God right, so right. um but we can have discourse and dialogue but we're not hating each other we're not throwing any spewing because right. we have an understanding we have a love for each other you right. feel me right so it right. all comes down to just information mm -hmm. yeah and there's a lot to break down to or break down and all of that, but I kind of want to start where Nico left off. It really is about getting rid of ignorance. It really is. You know, it, people when they when they look at voodoo, they they only focus on what TV tells them. Right. And TV's not. You know, for one, no, nobody's going to want to watch a show about how everybody got together and cried. Right. <laughs> you know, right. You know that's, Well, that's but some, don't you think some of that too, yeah. though? Yeah. You know, don't that, you think that, some that, of that too, though, is from from like when you're that that's that people unfortunately have because of maybe it's because of fear sometimes it's fear sometimes it's laziness but they're they're like un, they're uninquisitive they're right. not curious enough yeah like i'm super curious like i i, I believe what i believe but i i i trust or I, I feel strong enough about myself you know and about who god is and, and that that god loves me that i don't have to be afraid that if i mm -hmm. ask questions about voodoo that somehow like I, there's somebody we know some people and, and like my mom even says some stuff like this, like, like, you know, if you do yoga, that like spirits can enter your body or something like that. I'm like, bro, like, what if I, what if I'm just stretching for baseball and I accidentally do a yoga stretch, do the spirits still get into my spine? 
<laughs> you know, like, like right. I mean, come on, man. Like, man, like, you don't have to, like, like, there's a difference between but sitting I, at a Ouija board and, like, summoning some, like, you know, axe murderer from the grave to come and do something, you know, and, like, you gotta be all right, because it's not and, black like, people doing it. And, like, and, like, going into, like, a closet of a house you just uh, moved into, and, like, you bump the, the shelf and the Ouija board falls out, and all of a sudden now that's it, like, you're fucked. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it, some of this stuff that's just like it, it is like it's kind of storybook uh hollywood type of uh the blatant monitoring. ignorance right yeah. blatant ignorance. right exactly. To, mix, exactly to mix a couple of influences of mine one from from a voodoo tradition what we say is when, when christians are like you know hey what if you're wrong and you're gonna go to hell and yeah. we, we're like god's a pretty good dude from what i hear he's a good guy and i'm trying to be a good guy we'll work it out <laughs> <laughs> and that's generally where I come from. Yeah. But in, in Wicca, with Gerald Gardner, and he wrote a, uh, three books, but the, and this comes from Meaning of Witchcraft by Gerald Gardner, who was an anthropologist. He said that if the, 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 basically what you have to believe is that it's for God not to, uh, to, 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 for witches to be going to hell and Muslims to be going to hell and Sufis to be going to hell and Hindus and all these people just because they're not Christian, you have to believe that God is an asshole. And yeah, well, see, see, we have a we have a concept for that in in, in Catholicism. It's uh, and see, this is not something that's talked about a whole lot, but it's the concept of invincible ignorance. That yeah. like, if you're Chinese. And you're like out in the middle of nowhere and you die when you're three years old. God's like, sorry, bro. Should have been born in a Christian country. Right. What the fuck? You know, like it's not like that. Right. And, and, and the thing is that what Gardner said. Your parents said, never taught you this shit. You're screwed. Right. What Gardner said was, I, I, he said, I refuse to believe in a God that would punish me forever, for eternity, mm. for loving him differently. He said, I refuse to believe that. And that's where I'm at, too, is that I've seen, and I don't want to get into, because people think you're either full of shit or, may, or, or you're trying to be whatever, or you're crazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've seen too much shit to not believe in a God. Mm -hmm. I believe in God. Why? Because I've seen some shit. And, <laughs> and so, so I'm going to believe in God. But for me... I, it, for me, it's about the core. What, one of the things you talked about, Chad, is that it's finding that deep connection, that desire to find something divine, to, to be something right. divine. That's the thing. That's the thing. And see, that, that's another part of it, too. If you think about this on a spiritual warfare level, like, man, just like what we, like we were talking about with politics, if you can keep the people fighting each other instead of fighting the state, Right. Yep. Then, then you win no matter what. That's why there was a there was an old baseball manager back in the I don't remember when it was a long time. Casey Stengel, he his, his team was like terrible. They were just having an awful. They were fighting. They were fighting in the clubhouse. They're all so he just turned himself into a major asshole that everybody hated. So at least they agreed to hate him. Yeah. Because then they banded together <laughs> and they and they played better together. They still sucked, but they they played better together. Because they were busy hating him instead instead of each other, so it's kind of the opposite that the that the the, the state and the uh, you know the lizard men or whatever who, lizard people um, that they do it's it's this if you think about it from a spiritual warfare standpoint, man, what a great idea! Have all these different interpretations of who God is fighting each other about who Ooh. God is, right. so that they don't even pay attention to the <laughs> devil. Right. That is that is very wow. That's mind shattering if you think about it, because it's like, granted, yeah, we play this comparison game of God's better and all that, but we never really focused on like, hey, our God's cool, your God's cool. Let's just be cool together. <laughs> right. right. So, so let, if I if I may, I want to I want to kind of because this is because I think some of this come you know back to the the thing about like the kid in the basement and the fear and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I wanted to to read this. I was I just came upon this today. This is something I I tweeted this out like almost a year ago today. Um, this is from this, a Catholic priest wrote this. So just like kind of like just listen. So that, that we're not all we're not all bad. Like you know that the, the uh, if you if you really dig deep into the spirituality of it and stop thinking about like some of the 
the crazy shit that the hierarchy and the structure and the, you know, the organization or whatever you want to call it has done. So this is uh, Jacques Philippe from, it's, it's a book called Interior Freedom. And it's all about like gaining your freedom here so that you, it doesn't matter what happens to you. He, it, this is like stuff that's like, there, there are people who in prison are freer. Like, you know, when Adam wrote Freedom, yeah. he wrote Freedom in prison and he said that some of the some of the guards were like, I think this dude's freer than we are. <laughs> like, you know, like because he was free here and here. So so anyway, he says, very often we feel restricted in our situation, our family, or our surroundings. But maybe the real problem lies elsewhere in our hearts. There we are restricted, and that is the root of our lack of freedom. Mm. If we loved more, love would give our lives infinite dimensions and we would no longer feel hemmed in. This doesn't mean objective situations don't sometimes exist that need to be changed or oppressive circumstances that need to be remedied before the heart can experience real interior freedom. But quite often, we may also be suffering from a certain confusion. We blame our surroundings while the real problem is elsewhere. Our lack of freedom stems from a lack of love. We judge ourselves to be victims of di difficult circumstances when the real problem and its solution is within us. Our heart is imprisoned by our selfishness or fears, and it is we who need to change to learn how to love, uh, letting ourselves be transformed by the Holy Spirit. That is the only way of escaping from our sense of confinement. People who haven't learned to love will always feel like victims they will feel restricted wherever they are. The people who love never feel restricted. Hmm. That's awesome. Are. Could you send me that? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Wait, yeah. Twitter allowed you to type all those characters in? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a thread. It's a thread. Oh, okay. That was, that was, I was, that's, why I, that's why I had to keep sense. skipping. Like I, did a, I think I did a really good job of reading it as though I wasn't reading eight or it was like five or six different tweets. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was mm -hmm. a thread that I put together that had that whole quote. Yeah, no, yeah. that that sounded like one big old tweet. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, damn, man, you, you must have got in early in Twitter. Because right. actually, like, the people who, like, got in really, really early have, like... Uh, no restrictions, also, right? No, no restrictions, right. Or, or, or much less than us. That. I want to dig into that a little bit with, particularly with voodoo. And, and one of the things I, I need to, to kind of point out when, it, when dealing with voodoo as a religion of sorts is that, um, and when I say a religion of sorts, it, it's not centralized. Mm. It's not, it, it's a decentralized religion. There isn't, mm. sure, you More might personal. have an individual like uh, Hungan, who's a priest, who runs his hoover that that is is you know that's very centralized but he's got like maybe 10 20 people that come to him you know and but so it's a decentralized religion largely and so when we talk about god okay the the first image that we get to this is why voodoo you don't ever hear about voodoo being like you hindus just suck because right. we don't do we don't right. do that you know because for us if there's a God, and when I say if there's a God, I mean like an overarching oneness of Godness, you know, this mm -hmm. big thing. If there is, it's Legba. And, and Legba, for, uh, for us, is a big storyteller. And, he, and he's pictured as an old man, usually with either a cigar or a, or a pipe. A pipe. Mm -hmm. Around fire, telling stories. And in voodoo, what we believe. My is, man, he's a talker, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I like Lake, but he's a good time. So, so um, he is that each thing, whether that's you, a rock, a tree, a loa, Isis, Osiris, Venus, Jesus, Rama, Krishna, all of the gods that exist, all of the things that exist are just stories that Legba has told. So every single thing is just a story of Legbus, whether that's a person, place, thing, or idea. And so it's very difficult for somebody who practices, practices voodoo to be like, I don't like your religion because- Because yeah, it's one of the stories you're shitting on then. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. It's just somebody see, else's and vision. Yeah, and see, and, see, and, and so like, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can rock with that. Like, it, I can, that's uh that's interesting because so like I, my thinking was more like those are all those different things because there's all these like congruities 
you know, between these different saints or, you know, gods or demigods or whoever, um, you know, Jesus and Hercules or, you know, whatever the, all the different things that, and then there's all these different ways that people try to say, see, this shows you that this is bullshit because this was already, the, you know, it's like, I mean, it's just like, everybody's got their own like words for things and their own stories that they've, you know, that, that, that describe. Uh, and, and so it's, um, I try to, I try to, like I said, back to, when you think about it from a spiritual warfare standpoint, man, how kick-ass would it be if instead of the Catholics and Protestants fighting each other over who's right about Christianity, okay? They just got together. If they just got together and got together with the Hindus and the Muslims and the, and the voodoo uh, practitioners and, the, you know, like, if you got all these people together and you said, what we're going to do is we're going to fight to not like fuck people over anymore yeah, and to stop the people who are doing that from doing it. And we're going to fight against, I don't care what you call him, but the big bad guy, you know, cause, cause, yeah. cause we're not, the arguments aren't even like your God killed my God. No, it's like your God's not the same it's as not. my God. <laughs> your God's not as pretty as right? mine. <laughs> I don't, your, your God. He yeah. doesn't have the same gym shoes. Right. Like, right. Bro. God damn it, he's wearing Nikes. <laughs> exactly. It's, Actually, it's so, it's um, so crazy. Like the fight is in the, the fight is with the wrong people and for the wrong reasons and in the wrong direction. So. Uh, what is it? Uh, when you brought up that, uh, the, um, how Papa Legba, uh, tells his legacy mm -hmm. and his stories and all that basically everything being connected um one thing that actually really helped me out wasn't google <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a friend well it was a cousin but it um it was acid <laughs> it was mm -hmm. lsd it was dmt it was something that for sure. uh and since it's your, for your video it was all educational it's all education, oh, yeah. um, but <laughs> yeah, you, don't, um, you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about Marcus. Mar Marcus, look, look, give us a lowdown on where you've been. <laughs> <laughs> ayahuasca, right? I have not done ayahuasca. Not done ayahuasca. Okay. That's the next so journey. That's, all right, all right, all right. Okay. But, but I, it's I, on the so list, maybe. At the end I, of the I day, I like mushrooms a lot. Uh, <laughs> those, those, those motherfuckers. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> both of you are uh, familiar with Terrence McKenna, right? I, Marcus, I would assume, Terrence McKenna. Yep. Um, so, so he opened my eyes up um, to how society and civilization should work. Nature, Nietzsche, is something that works in tandem, something that works in full machine. Mm -hmm. It's unison. <laughs> With that one ecosystem, you don't have another. Um, I personally believe all the leaders should have an ego death experience, something mm -hmm. that represents you not seeing you as you anymore, but as a collective. Because yeah. at the end of the day, granted you're a single little micro speck on this planet that can get wiped away by a meteor in an instant second, mm -hmm. but your ideas, your thoughts, your experiences, and who you are as a person fully help shape the web. <laughs> right. It's always about what you can do it's not so like for example this whole hoo-ha with this goddamn riots and black lives matter it's about what you do we were black people are asking oh where's our leader where's our leader mm -hmm. and we can't go to beyonce we can't go to jay-z we can't go to any of them entertainments but it's you it's me and like i kept saying where's our leader and i'm like Oh, huh, maybe I should do this. Huh, maybe. Well, yeah, maybe I should do it. I should, I should start doing it. Mm -hmm. And when I start doing something, it's not just for me. It's for a collective. It's for me, my family, my friends, and, right. and for the Hotep Nation. So it's like, it's not. Um, so when it comes to power, um, I believe that somebody should humble your ass. And it's not, <laughs> and it's not a human Somebody being an entity other than uh, three-dimensional, I should say. As soon as you take something as long as along the lines of DMT or uh, anything along the lines of that chemical compound, you show your emotions. You show yourself. And 
when you have that collective of people who have those powerful um, or who are in those roles, I personally believe every person who's in a role that pushes society in a certain way should have done DMT or some kind of uh, mind perception altering drug to make you realize this is all in unison. Mm. This is all, and it's all connected because then it helped develop my spiritual sense. Um, after I took an a acid tab, I developed a huge spiritual sense because I was having the biggest battle of my life because of my ex-girlfriend due to spirituality. She was following along Christianity and that was my family all my life. I was confirmed in eighth grade for crying out loud. Sunday school every Sunday morning. But things didn't sit with me. So I did this. I did the acid tab. I had an intention and it helps. Once you set an intention under those guidelines, it helps steer you. I had the intention of finding who God was. I have my God. I went on a super deep, super deep uh, spiritual little journey quest for like about like half a month or not half a month like six months and i i love it i like i sit down and meditate granted that's not everybody but this made me realize hey nick maybe you should take yourself into more in consideration because the more you take yourself into consideration the closest thing you are to god because your body's a temple for sure yeah and when you were talking it reminded me of um, in, in Philema, which is the philosophy of Aleister Crowley. And I know people are going to get freaky, but again, black and white, I don't go with it. But <laughs> <laughs> Aleister Crowley talked about, uh, he has a book that's like their holy book, um, that it's called the Book of the Law. And it's divided into three chapters, but I'm not going to get into the real depth of it. Long story short, the, the first two chapters are about the universe. The first part is uh, based on the Egyptian goddess Nuit, who is the night sky. She is every single thing that is, every single perspective that is. She is everything. She is the circumference of the universe. The second chapter is about Hadith, which is a solar disk god. He is any specific point within that everything that is. So at any moment, he can be any part of that. And I think, because talking about the collective and, and expanding your mind, and whether through through drugs or through meditation or through ritual or th there are a dozen different ways you can get there when you get mm -hmm. there that experience needs to be both collective and the totality of everything but also very intimately personal mm -hmm. and it needs to be where you not only go outside and go as far as you can but you also go inside and go as deep mm -hmm. as you can at the same time in the philemic pantheon the, the, the marriage of those two ideas, it comes through the goddess Babylon, B-A-B-A-L-O-N. And yes, she is the whore of Babylon because she loves everybody. But the idea when you come unto Babylon is that you empty yourself, everything that you are, everything you have ever been, everything that you know, your ancestors, everything, you funnel and she is the goddess that you are reaching when you're reaching enlightenment. You funnel and it's symbolized as blood. You pour all of your blood into her cup and you die. You cease being. You give up your ego. And you mix it with everybody else's blood who has been that way. And when you come out on the other side, which in Kabbalistic, which uh, Kabbalah is a, a Jewish system of uh, spirituality. When you come out of the, and that's called, that experience in Kabbalah is called Banah which means understanding. When you come out on the other side of that, you move into mm -hmm. what is called hokma, which is wisdom. And when you come out to that other side, you are no longer you. You are everyone who has come that way. And so what I have found is that you are right, that you need this ever expansive, I am part of the trees, I am part of the air mm -hmm. kind of experience to, in my opinion, to, to really get that, no matter if you're a, a, a Christian or a Buddhist or whatever it is, but to get that, that deep deeper point, empathy, you do need basically. to understand everything, but you also have to get it and be willing to give up everything you are to get full understanding of what God is. Mm. So that's what it brought to mind when you were talking about that expansive 
religious experience. And, and I think that yeah, that's traditional it, in a it, dozen uh, different religions. Mm -hmm. I, um, I genuinely um, do a lot of things um, from like spiritual matter um, because at the end of the day, we are souls living <laughs> for the feeling, for the, for the feeling. It's okay. all feeling. But um, I personally believe that, uh, ooh, did I lose my train of thought? I'm so sorry, gentlemen. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, all in all, people need to, uh, people need that experience. Um, my homie, uh, me and him have had uh, another experience, but he was being an asshole. <laughs> an asshole, a blatant one. He was okay with it. Um, granted, he, he was going through some shit in his life, and he just it just was not rocking with him. So I was like, okay, guys, we're about to take a trip. Um, so he did it, and he had an ego death experience. Um, while he had that paranoia, me and my other homie got thrown in his paranoia. So not only are we dealing with our own stuff, but we have to deal with his. Mm. We essentially, I will not lie to you, all became connected. Like after we were running and panicking and running around down upstairs, all three of our brains were linked. I was Tyson and my boy Darion at the same time. Uh -huh. And it just only makes me think what we're allowing ourselves to actually be <laughs> opposed to what we see. We mm. see segregation all the time we see all this mm. other hoo-ha all this other madness all this other bullshit confusion but what are we supposed to be mm. and what people don't understand is when you are being something so say if you want to be a better man or you want to be more knowledgeable you are going to make sure it happens so that term monkey see monkey do is very evident amongst the collective <laughs> the collective of people because you can't you can't tell somebody unless they see it everybody is like i have to see it to yeah believe. yeah no right 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 that's gullible definitely. or not gullible or not we are people who were brought here saying all right now you believe in god right <laughs> like that's extremely difficult to believe that when you feel is god yeah mm -hmm. but when you sit down when you and experience have different, it and i was telling yeah. chad this when you experience it and have different perceptions not through your perception i believe you need to have some kind of moment in your life to change your perception just a little bit to make you think oh well it's not all about me it's about other people as well because it don't matter about this it don't matter about this it don't nothing else but what you do for the community of people and help them grow that's all we're here for but people make the shit difficult <laughs> well, so so if 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 I may, let me uh, so I, ca I kind of like redirect that sentiment about like the, the because the, yes, our our connection to the universe and our connection to our community and everything in between that whole spectrum of uh, size and um, distance and everything that that from from like your family all the way to or just like one relationship with one person all mm -hmm. the way through to like your connection to the universe, to God, to all other beings that have ever existed and, and, and will ever exist, it still comes back to, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a connection and a calling, uh, like a vocation of sorts, um, that we all have to kind of embrace. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read because this, this says it a, a lot better than, so this is uh, Howard Thurman. He says, um, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Hmm. I like that. Bars. <laughs> so, that, so that's... it's, so if you really think about like so often we're, we're, we, we settle and we allow ourselves to become back to that interior freedom stuff, you know, like we allow ourselves to disconnect with love and to start to close in on ourselves because we're not doing the things that make us come alive. We're, we're settling for the things that, that don't challenge us, that, that keep us from being vulnerable because, you know, people think vulnerability is like this bitch thing to be, but, but okay. So 
what's more of a bitch mode thing to do to go out there and fight and to make yourself to risk getting hurt to, to, to be vulnerable, or is it more of a bitch mode thing to do to hole up in a bunker and cover yourself and not ever expose yourself to the world? Exactly. Vulnerability is, is strength. For vulnerability sure. is the only place that bravery does not come from not being afraid. Bravery comes from saying, I'm scared shitless, but this has to be done. I got to do it anyway. Yeah, and, and I think what, that- if you're, not afraid, think- if you're not afraid, that's not bravery. That's just you not being challenged. For so sure. it, it's, it, it, that's, that's kind of where that's, that sort of connects with me is that we find our own calling within ourselves because there's something that each one of us uniquely is being asked to do that if we're not listening, then we're not doing anything for the rest of the universe, for the, for our community, because we're not even doing, we're not even, we're not even doing what we are designed and called and make, well, why we're here. We, we're not even doing that. We're too busy focusing on either what other people think, whether we're going to be accepted or not. You start to, sometimes some of that stuff starts to, starts to become approval seeking rather yeah. than an actual fulfillment of yourself and your your reason for existence. For sure. Hotep Jesus covered this recently. He was talking about the, um, when he was talking about the, you're with the program, you're sitting on this program and you need to change your goddamn program. We get, we get into that fucking same mentality, whether you're talking about spirituality, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about your daily life, we all get wrapped up into the program that we're supposed to follow. And what we need to do is jump off the fucking program. And that comes back to what Nico was talking about. We need to to have what uh, Carolyn Mace, who's a a new age thinker, she uh, she calls it the dark night of the soul. It's Mm. this diving in to finding yourself. And what that enables you to do is exactly what you're talking about, Chad. You're, you, you get out of that programming that you're taught. You have to fear for this. You have to do this. You can't, you can't get together. You can't talk. You, this is the program that you've been fed. And by having that dark night of the soul, by going through that, that expansive belief system, you know, challenge, belief system challenging moment where you have this godlike experience, you can't right. stay on the program anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like when we, we talked last week, we wanted, we wanted to start developing Aquarian Anarchy towards solutions. Right. I think this is one of the solutions mm-hmm. is finding whatever, and I don't care if you consider yourself an atheist, but you're trying to better yourself, whatever your own spiritual work is that you're doing for yourself will help your community, will help right. free people. That's the right. kind of work that each of us should be doing. Whether, whether you, you buy into my craziness, you buy into Chad's craziness, yep. you buy into Nico's craziness, it doesn't fucking matter. Work on getting yourself. And if somebody's, you know, to speak to Jesus, if somebody's trying to be like that dude, I will do every goddamn thing I can to help them. That was a cool dude. Right. Talk about love. <laughs> Talk about leave people the fuck yeah. alone. That's my kind of guy. So if you're going to be like Jesus, great. Yeah. Yeah, he flipped over the tables of the money changers in the temple and all that good stuff, you know? Right. Jesus was a savage, too. Right. Um, savage, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, yeah, so, like, the, you know, the, the, touching on what you said about, you know, uh, our, our unique craziness, mm-hmm. you know, if you think about it, that's actually the only sanity that there is. The craziness yeah. is the shit that we have, like, come up with and just swallowed whole. Right. Which is like, you're bad because you don't believe I, what I believe. You're bad because you don't believe what either of us believes. So you're like extra bad because you haven't even figured out yet. But you know, or, or, or you're, or, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's like this. No, seriously, there's like the, the people like argue. Should people go to war over this stuff? You know? And the, and the, the other thing is too, like, let's, you know, the, yeah. the big elephant yeah. in the room is that the worst religion in this whole thing is, is statism, is the, the belief that if you give a bunch of power to people on earth to rule over other people as they see fit that like somehow that's going to make the religions, you know, agree with you. No, that's actually the vehicle that what, what they've done is that there's been a lot of corruption of the, the, the idea. And it's been, it's really clever if you think about it. So 
religion has been credited with being the source of so much conflict, so much war, so much death and destruction. But if you really think about it, what's happened right. is actually the state is the source of all that. And the state has used religion as a way to pit people against each other. Hmm. And the state's source is, is, is evil because only evil, like Adam said, the reason why his, his plan was, if you elect me president, I will sign an executive order day one, resign from the presidency and start the bankruptcy process because no one, unless you're a psychopath, should want to be president. <laughs> no one should want to have that much power no, over not at all. 350 million people. No one. Yeah, and it, so, it, so, can... so that's, that's the source of, when you think about it, like concentrating all this power over people to go murder people all over the world for whatever reason you come up with, like that's the evil. Right. And, 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 and it's, or it's the manifestation of the evil that we should all be fighting. And so instead, what are we doing? We're fighting over whether it's really the blood and, and body of Jesus. We're fighting over whether voodoo is like voodoo dolls poking in people and it's making, you know, like all, yeah, exactly. Whether, you know, and whether, uh, oh, because it's, because it's a, a, a religion that came from Africa that, that makes it even worse because now it's like, you know, you know what happens when, when black people do stuff, it must, yeah. there must be something wrong with it. <laughs> it's like, God damn, man, we're, we're, we're all, we, we could actually, we could actually have had for thousands of years, the kingdom of heaven on earth. If we could just get out of our own damn way. Absolutely. One of the best things. It's that I ego, man. And Nico, if you haven't checked it out, I think Chad has luck and rose. Did, and you can do a search that is that's uh, just type in Larkin Rose and religion. And it's like a 15 minute video that he did about how the statism is a religion and he breaks it down and it absolutely is. And it is the most dangerous religion on the planet because it is the only religion that says I can kill other motherfuckers who disagree with me. We, 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 you, if you think about it, like the kids in school, they pray to the flag every morning. Oh uh, yeah, that they get up and worship corrupt. the flag, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 what's crazy about it? So this is what's, this was what's always been funny to me about so I, the whole like kneeling for the national anthem thing. I think I personally, I think there's some other things, other ways that it could have been done that would have been like if you Behind think about it? it from. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying like if you think about it from a like trying to persuade people better, it could have been done better to actually like achieve. So what was what was interesting to me, and this is again, I think if you think about like some of the conspiratorial stuff, what's behind some of this stuff. So simultaneously with Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed and some other, you know, Eric Reed went to LSU, and I, I still love the dude. Like I, I even though like th this whole thing has kind of become like a very polarizing issue. Simultaneously right. with that was the NFL allowing these uh, choreographed end zone dances. And so what, what, what people were, so you have people kneeling for the national anthem and making a spectacle out of that, making a bunch of people who like, they've got their religious beliefs about the flag and about war and the military and what their dad did, their granddad did, their cousin, their uncle, whatever, you know? So you're automatically polarizing and, and pissing those people off. And then every time a touchdown is scored, they're doing hide and go seek, or they're doing, they're standing up like bowling pins and they're doing, you know, and they're doing all this stuff. Like, I think it would be a great opportunity there to, instead of doing that for the flag and polarizing and cutting off those people, those people were not going, you were not going to win them over to your cause because you, mm -hmm. you pissed them off immediately. Instead, taking that opportunity when you had this choreographed stuff to choreograph, they could have done, Dude, do you could you imagine choreographing and like reenacting stuff, and that what that would have done to make the cause like yeah. really really come to the forefront? Like it 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 was a, a huge missed opportunity. But but beside that point, for all my like uh, white conservative friends out there who uh, who thought it was wholly abhorrent to not stand and salute and put their hand on their heart for the national anthem. I, I'm an LSU graduate. I've gone to several, you know, I, I don't go to that many games anymore because it's too easy to watch it on TV and, you know, not have to, you get to get up and go, you get to go, go to their fridge and go piss whenever you want to. And, you know, the, you don't have to sit through all the commercials in the stands. You get to get up and do stuff. Anyway, 
But at those games, and I, I'm sure they do this plenty of other places in a similar fashion. So when we are singing the national anthem at LSU football games, there's this thing that the entire stadium does that when we get to the end and the home of the, what do we say at the brave. end? Not brave. They say no? tigers. So oh, that's not bad. disrespectful. <laughs> that's not disrespectful of the flag and all the people who died. But when somebody gets shot by a cop and you kneel, go to fucking hell. That's yeah. what the, and so, so I, I'm, I'm one of these people that I can see the bullshit on both sides and like the missed opportunities on both sides. And so I tell my friend, I'm like, so do you say in the home of the brave or do you say in the home of the tigers? Because they think it's real cute to say tigers instead of singing the song. With you. <laughs> you know? But God forbid you protest by kneeling, just kneeling, nothing disrespectful. You're kneeling. Right. Like, in church, that's reverence. Talking. In church, <laughs> in church, that's reverence. Kneeling. Well, well in, in, you know, like it's 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 really bizarre, and it and it it convinces me that it's some fuckery that's invented by other people, that is put in the hands of people to. to make this whole shit explode in our faces. Right, and and that's what worries me about what's currently going on. And I'm not saying, I mean, I, I have posted shit tons of stuff just smashing on the police. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But this, this whole... Pause. Huh? This whole Nothing. thing... You said smash and the police. Yeah, yeah. And, anyway, this whole so. thing Nico has been knows. way too easy. To <laughs> they, they have they right. this, this whole thing set up. And, and what we need to see more of, in my opinion, is more of this. More of mm. more of people of all races, all religions, all coming together and and, and saying, you know what? Fuck your fuckery. I'm right. not. You got a pig out there who hurt some motherfuckers, and they need to to find justice. Which well, means that people who were harmed need to be made whole. A I few days ago, a few days ago, Uncle Hotep retweeted, or or he may have tweeted it himself, or something. But it was some somebody said, you know, talking talking to white people like y'all should have protested Waco and Ruby Ridge. Because <laughs> really think about it, you know, like where were the riots, you know, where were the, mm -hmm. like, where's your, you, you care about freedom and you care about individuals and all that stuff. And then, and these are like, uh, anyway, uh, we, we don't need to get into all that stuff, but it's just, it's, it's when I, when I had this thing with my friend uh, before we came on, I was talking to Nico about it before uh, like you, you came on right as we were uh, kind of wrapping that whole little thing up. But, it was just, it really like, it broke my heart to, to listen to somebody like just basically parroting the same shit that I've been hearing for three weeks. Like, like it's like, like it's his, his own ideas. Like, oh, okay, black on black crime, abortion in the black community. And, uh, you know, the, there's not that many, you know, there's a small percentage of bad cops. And then he sends me a, like a video of people looting and stuff. And I'm like, bruh come on man and so i sent him i was like i was like i sent him I sent him a video of the shock and awe campaign in iraq i was like because he, he said he just sends me this video of like looting on a train or something like that and he's like explain this video like i haven't talked to him in four days and this is what he says so i'm like so i'm like i'm not answering that i'm just gonna send him this video of us bombing the fuck out of, or not us them <laughs> right the fucking, the them. fucking military them, them bombing iraq <laughs> like, I, it's it, it the programming is is deeply entrenched it, it's so um, broken into us man it is it is it's, the english language is a dangerous oh track, yeah no man. no I, it is wow yeah you're right right there's a lot of collectivism in that's, there that's something we do have to uh also like really alter and change and view is what we say people so oh powers yeah. is words no powers is words so I was having a conversation with my neighbor, like, I think probably a month ago or something like that. He wasn't even my neighbor, but that's besides the point. Um, and I was telling him, like, you know, the English language is broken. He was like, no, it's not. And as soon as he did that, I was like, oh, <laughs> he was saying, oh, it's used everywhere. And I'm like, granted, it's used everywhere. You got to think smaller than that, but bigger. <laughs> it's smaller, but bigger. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right, right. I was trying to have this dial i mean i was having dialogue with him and when he was breaking things down saying how america is this how america is that and i like sit down on thursdays and watch my hotel's been told you 
And I'm just looking at him like, wow, you stuck, dude. Granted, I can't say that because he knows what he knows. Mm-hmm. And he's had the years and the experience, but he hasn't gotten the outlets that I've gotten. And he has the outlets that I haven't gotten to. So I always have to step back and humble myself yeah. when it comes to talking to people about certain situations because you can instantly just like, yeah, you're an idiot. But they're not as educated in that certain topic opposed to, you know, you and others, mm-hmm. if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So it, uh, it's tough. It's definitely tough because it's very tempting. So I fell tempting. I fell deep into the temptation today. <laughs> I like just went, I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit, man. I, I like, and he got all mad. He's like, I can't believe this has happened to our friendship and everything. I'm like, look, man, like when you send me a video of like some shit, like, you know, you know, like the circles that are, that I run in and you know that like you're sending me this stuff and you're, you're trying to, I don't even know what the fuck you want me to say. Like, what am I explain this video? Like I don't answer commands like that shit you know like if you want to say like hey i think this is you know b- bullshit whatever so anyway and it, the the so remember i was saying like it's pretty racist or or yeah i mean i i don't want to say it because i like i i, I huh. want to be able to say he's not but i i think he it, it's pretty much done he, yeah he, Go ahead, Chad. <laughs> but he says he says something about unfortunately this is uh unfortunately this is something you know like basically like this is this is the black community this you know looting a train video or whatever and i was like so i said well that video of iraq is pretty much the white community so it's like you know because like if, if you want to be that collectivist like <laughs> i don't i'm not part of that shit you know and the people that i that i roll with aren't part of the looting shit either you know but like if we're being real let's really talk about like and that's why so like i, I don't know if you saw it but i i, I, I did a poll uh last week about i was like all right so what was the what was the more uh it was like a like the more over the top um misdirected and um orchestrated response the response oh and i was like oh was it for like that voting yeah yeah it was like george floyd yeah or 9-11 or the lusitania or uh what was the other one huh oh pearl harbor yeah yeah pearl harbor right and so and I was like really, really disappointed. Like it was like almost half what people said it was George Floyd. It's like, are y'all fucking retarded, man? God damn, man. Come on. Like the Lusitania, on, man. the Lusitania like was like third place. It's like, this is some shit that like I'm pretty certain the bankers sank it in order to start the whole domino orchestra going to like, central bank. Yeah income tax like global like coverage of the of, you know there's there's this huge cabal of people who like now they're like oh all right so we, the one place that didn't have all this shit we're gonna take them over now so it was, it was just it, it was the ripple effect that if you look at it the u.s had not been involved in any conflict where we went overseas and fucked with anybody else's shit until then and then ever since we have not fought a battle, not a battle on US soil, it's all oh, been somewhere else. No, always somewhere else. Yeah, that's that's where it's it comes always back been defensive to... before then, and it's always been aggressive since then, but pitched as defensive. So anyway, what were you gonna say? Sorry. It always comes back, you're all good. It always comes back to history and knowledge. Like, like those are the t- that drive this whole thing. If you mm-hmm. take your kids through a history lesson from school, from K through 12, mm-hmm. and then you sit their ass down for a summer and be like, all right, now Google everything that they said and see if you find any contradictions, I <laughs> bet you they'll come back with a whole bunch. Right, right, <laughs> I bet right. you. And so that makes, it should give people more incentive. And if this damn coronavirus shit didn't give more, people incentive to look to things i don't know what will but, bro, i don't I got, know what will because I, I don't have i don't have a whole bunch of followers but i lost a bunch when i tweeted i said if you still <laughs> if you still fly and salute the flag after this you're a simp yeah you are <laughs> you genuinely are like and people how were many like times that ain't it they, this, you know they were like 
like following me, blocking me, and like arguing with me and everything. I was like, I said what I said. At the end of the day, we've been lied to so many times blatantly, like legit in front of our face for us not to realize, hey, we have the internet. Maybe we should use it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had this discussion it's, with my dad about the flag on, on, over the weekend. And it was, you know, he's like, oh, that's not what the flag means. And I was like, no, man, look, I'm telling you, like, just step back. Step back from what you've been told your whole life. Just step back and, like, think to yourself. Ask yourself, like, just take yourself through the thought exercise. Hmm. If I wanted mm. to make a bunch of people like religiously devoted to something, I would make a symbol that was unassailable and that everyone had to pledge allegiance to. And I would make them recite that prayer so much that it was like ingrained in their head. And then I would fill the whole entertainment, media, everything with a bunch have of propaganda and have the, right, have the kids do it. And then, and then fill the media mm -hmm. and the entertainment industry with all this propaganda. And then tell your, tell your sons and dads and uncles and brothers when they go off to war that they're fighting for your freedom, even though they're fighting for poppy fields or oil fields or gold or whatever it is. Tell them they're doing all those things. Mm -hmm. And then tell me that that, that flag is not a religion and it's and it's not you can hold this, these positions at the same time you can hold at the same time that like the people who didn't know that they were being lied to went over there and sacrificed their lives for what they thought was their families and their freedoms and that you mm -hmm. hate that that happened to them and that you cry for their families and you hurt for their families and for them and for their souls but then you also recognize that the people who orchestrated all that bullshit are full of fucking shit and they're evil. Right. And you can hold those two things at the Ooh. same time. You don't, you don't have to worship the state in order to not hate the people who died because they thought they were fighting for freedom. Right. And, and the, the hard part too. It's just another is that, human being. Yeah. It, it, this is, it, it's very difficult for people to make that break too. Yeah. It, it, because, and, and I tell people, you know, because for me, I'm an anarchist, and my flag is black. You know, fuck all your flags. Fuck every bit of that worshiping somebody else's bullshit. And <laughs> so, but, but mm -hmm. you've got to warn people because it is hard. It is hard to, to have a freedom-based mentality because you have to question shit. And you can't mm -hmm. just go along. You just can't just get along. You've got to think, and you've got to think for yourself. So I tell people right out of the gate, when they start, when they're like, tell me about this. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll tell you about it. Warning. If so you that, follow this train that I'm about to start, you will wind up an anarchist. It, it will happen. Because if because the, the natural progression yeah. to the fuckery leads you to fuck your government. That's where it goes. So Yeah, but the, the uh the phrase the phrase that you start that conversation with is you're not ready for that conversation. <laughs> Usually, what is it? I mean, I'm glad. Usually, they're not. I'm uh, super grateful that you guys brought up the point of the flag because um, before we got into this, I was watching a few videos, and I'll throw it in the chat. Um, but this brainwashing of a flag and what it can do to your nation. So back in 1804, when Haiti, um, and then like a little bit prior to that, back before it uh like freed themselves they freed themselves from um the french they had a flag that was black and red it was black and red and that black and red had ties to voodoo had mm. strong ties to voodoo like that and ever since yep ever since they switched that around to being blue red green with the machi the machetes um the the cannonball, the green little shrubbery, and then the little flag. It's all, all supposed to represent France. They don't care. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> and so it was a it was that trigger that you don't have. If you had that black and red flag throughout Haiti consistently representing voodoo, black power, and all the other things that had mm. with it. The Haitian country, Haiti now would be completely different. Sure. It's almost like it's almost like a Hunger Games Opposed sort of to, transition where they like go like this is to remind us of the rebellion that we're all ashamed of. 
<laughs> you know, like, well, and we need to make amends for this. Right. To build right. on that with voodoo symbolism, understand that in voodoo, how you call the loa is there's a symbol. It's called a bebe. And you place that symbol down and you call out that, that, uh, that spirit from that bebe. It's like saying, hey, come over here. And when you are in, embodying legba, I didn't know this, by the way, but, but it makes absolute sense. When you're saying our nation is legba, remember what I talked about, the, the inclusiveness of legba how it is everything and everyone and everything. But when you take two machetes, mm -hmm. put them together, and you throw some green on there, what that says to a voodoo practitioner is a goon who is the god of war. And so I wonder why Haiti has been at war mm. with itself forever. Wow, wow they have bro. God damn, man. You just exploded my brain. Right? Yo. Yeah. And it's, yo. <laughs> because I've, so... Yeah. With the um paper that uh the paper that uh not the paper but the text that I got um if people don't know this Nikola Tesla was the one who decided to say hey I'm gonna build this earthquake machine and yeah, the GOV that. was like um we gonna need to repossess that so um the guy that I was telling you about I think is I can't remember his name I'll throw it in the chat but he um. He said that Haiti has been consistently fucked with because they were the only black people to liberate themselves from uh, the white colonists. Sure. And so the earthquake, the earthquake was a machine. I personally believe the earthquake was a machine now. Ever, like, after you put these little ducks in a row, I personally believe that they did that. <laughs> I believe it's um, possible. And then after that, um, the mass murderings and then Pizzagate ran all through that shit. So, um, um, so like, it makes complete sense on being somebody who's a part of the culture, you know what symbols are and what they do. Ignorance. Ignorance is the key out here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit you with the cell phone. You're just gonna be bored. Bored in the house. Bored in the house. Bored. No. Right. There's so much information out here, and people be like, oh, I'm bored. And I get pissed at myself when I say I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have to get pissed with yourself when you say you're bored. Because there's so much stuff out here that you personally don't know that your brain is like, feed me. <laughs> you feel me? So, yeah. um, well, that's why, that's why, that, that's it why all we... together. Yeah, go ahead. What's up? No, I was saying, that's why, that's why I sent you that link to Skillshare. So you could get into there, get in there and dig into yeah, that. Yeah, no. Uh, Learning, learning some of those those trades. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go to Skillshare for like history and shit because there's probably some like propaganda. Yeah, no, nah, but it's but skills just for skills. the skills. Yeah, for, for the skills. skills. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So tying but it all together. Tying it back together. The flag has such. It's not even a flag. It's what the flag represents, which is symbolism. Once you have that symbolism. Because every time you think of red, white, and blue, it's the states. It's not Italy, or not Italy's green, but mm -hmm. you feel me? Like, it doesn't tell you France. It doesn't, you don't think of France since you're in America. Right. You think of America. You straight from wrong. <laughs> you feel me? Right. So when you're yeah. able to change that perception from strength, or you change it from American flag, the 50 states, the 50 stars, or you you start to bring in the whole tech nation if you will every time somebody sees that trident they're like oh shit <laughs> like because they know a oh, hotep's in the building and we're yeah. gonna hit you with x so it's how you how can you change the symbolism to make people open their eyes up what is so every time you see the devil oh he yes yes sir <laughs> every time you see the devil you're like Oh, he's so ugly. He's so scary. Oh, my God. Are y'all dumb or stupid? God <laughs> said he's an angel. The right. most beautiful one of them all. Why would the most beautiful angel come over here all snarled up and ugly? It makes sense why there's a polarity of good and bad because the devil encourages you to feel good about yourself. That's what that man does. Um... Side note, my friend, he read the uh, Satanic Bible. He's not a Satanist. Mm. But he broke things down to me. And the Satanic Bible, bro, they don't want you to even eat meat. They want you to be vegan. <laughs> and 
that just goes to show like everything that you're told is screwed. Like you have to do your own research. You have to change your symbols. You have to realize what's a real symbol, what's not a symbol. Mm. What's the ploy, what's not the ploy. Once you take a step back, and that's where Chad, and how you were symbols saying, can be uh, manipulated too. How they can take mm-hmm. a symbol that's actually good and then turn it into something over time, you know, or with an event. Yeah. They can transition a symbol and turn it from something good into something evil, or vice versa. Turn, AKA turn, the turn Bible, the witch, the wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, like you can make yourself look like you're right, right. Anyway, so go ahead and finish. The, the Bible, or well, I can jump over this to the Bible. The Bible. It's basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> basic instructions, not complicated ones. We're not asking you to do rocket science. <laughs> We're asking you to follow what is good in your heart. It's not hard, but then you got that ego. The ego that feeds on addiction and all the other shit that it pays attention to the symbolism. Because Michael Jordan, every time he sees that motherfucker jumping from the star line, he knows it's his brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, right, right, right. It's well, all about symbolism and, on the Bible, and how you change On the Bible, too, like, if you think about it, like, how many people know how to speak Greek, Aramaic, Hebrew? Nope. You know, nope. Damn near nobody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and so what are we reading? We're reading the King James version of the Bible? Like, I wonder who that favors. Maybe I heard King, King James, James was gay, too. <laughs> I mean, shit, I don't know, like, but but you know, you start thinking about this stuff, and, and it's like, and I, so I, you, you have to start wondering, like, some of the stuff we were talking about before about like God casting you into hell because you're, you know, like He's gonna throw you into Gehenna because you didn't do something, you know, or you or whatever the case may be, and so it's like, hmm, all right, and Gehenna was like where they would like burn bodies and stuff like that, and burn garbage and everything, and. Um, it's uh um, well, this smells nice yeah yeah right <laughs> but but no but so so like if you think about that stuff then then like okay so where where did that get maybe twisted a little bit a turn of phrase here or there and one or or several telephone of the, inter- of the interpretation exactly it's the telephone game it is and we're reading the bible that and so like i'll so I was, see i'm wearing this shirt here that says our family fights so i'll, I'll read something now I don't know how many times this has been interpreted and everything, but it, you know, it's, it's still, it's still cool. So that talking about like what, like the instruction manual or whatever you want to call it, like this is ultimately what it comes down to is like finding what you believe in or finding what, what you value, who you value, and then like living for and fighting for them. It, it says, uh, uh, let's see, where is it? Remember the Lord and fight on behalf of your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your households. And that's that's it. That's that's what that's the quote that's on the back. It's Nehemiah four fourteen. It's on the back of this shirt. Um, and and it's really like that. So like if you think about it from that standpoint, back to that thing about who the enemy is and and how we're not each other's enemies. Because I think so much of this stuff is a is a fuckery of like if you can get people fighting against each other instead of fighting the real enemy. Then, then you've then you've won before the battle even starts because you're, they're not even fighting like you're watching. It, what's that? What's that old phrase like when your enemy right. when your enemy is killing is eating itself or, or destroying itself? Let it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So like the, the, the <laughs> yeah. enemy, the enemy has just said, "Y'all fucking destroy yourselves, and I'm gonna take the day off." Right. You know, yeah. and 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 and. and Truth be told, the enemy doesn't really take a day off because it's just no. digging the fuckery in deeper and everything. But sure does make the job a hell of a lot easier. But ultimately, like I still, you know, I'm Catholic, like like we've discussed before and everything, and I still believe that there's this uh, this this notion still prevails that the the gates of hell cannot prevail against the uh, against God against good, and sure. and so so we ultimately win anyway. It's just a matter of like how much suffering and how much disillusion um, we can, uh, and how much illusion, you know, like disillusion from the standpoint of like dissolving, but illusion, you know, uh, I think we have, there's, there's so much confusion and, um, and doubt in ourselves and in each other that is sown that I think we are, what our job, what we're here for is to, is to try to wake up as many people as we can and to try to, to build 
something strong enough to be fortified. So like when Marcus and I were talking last week about where do we go um, with, with this show from here, you know, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people out there identifying all the problems and they, they can, you know, they'll play clips over and over again of all the different things that are wrong and all the things that are bad and all the different things that are, you know, but, all right, where's the solutions? That's why I like, like, so I, you know, go to like to uh, someone like uh, Shakim Amen Aket, who's like building, you know, he's got a, a, a computer lab and he's got suits for people where he's like, he's making it to where people have somewhere to go to learn and to get the things that they need to go to that job interview or to go to uh, an admissions office or whatever the case may be. Um, the, the forward thinking, how do we work together and how do we say, like, how do we find like, okay, you can do this. I can't do that. So can you help me do that? And I can help you do this because that's not your skill set. Like we start to compound our skills with each other and we start to learn new skills from each other and we build and we create like this symbiotic um, movement that can at least insulate us from a lot of the fuckery and at its best can help us to overcome it and, and free other people from it. For sure. It, it uh, is. Nico just way, disappeared. Oh, there he is. All right. It is a way to kind of get to agorism. It is um, a way to try to be in, 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 Nico, I don't know if you're familiar with agorism. It's counter economics. It's taking down the state from the perspective. No, of, I do not. Yeah. It, it's from the perspective of not, like feeding people, pay as feeding little it, taxes yeah. as possible. You uh, do things like move to cryptocurrency for stuff, grow a garden, do whatever you can to get away from the system that so the government consistently has to... feeding into. Right. Yeah, no, nah, I um, I feel you on that. No, nah, because and people don't know this, and I'm fairly sure you guys explain this, but every dollar that y'all decide to spend at a movie theater or Netflix or any other of that shit that y'all like go straight to bombing your friends in Syria. <laughs> so everybody who said, oh, well, I'm not a part of it. Your dollars are the ones who help pay for it. So for sure. before you think that you're scot-free and got no blood on your hands, you've got all the blood in your hands yep. just from being ignorant. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, just, and, and, and it's our, our, our whole way ahead. of life is kind of is, is, you know, we, the, the fact that we don't live in like huts or, uh, you know, walking around in the dirt and stuff like that to the extent that we have not been able to uh, like advance ourselves beyond some of the fuckery that has gone on. I mean, you, you really think about it and like a lot of what we, where we are, like what's the dollar, what's the dollar backed by? It used to be backed by gold. It's not backed by anything anymore, except one thing, the yeah. strength of the U S military. <laughs> yeah. Because if you don't <laughs> use U S dollars, if you don't use U S dollars, which is, you know, if you, if you don't, if you, if, if they try to break the U S dollar as like the, the reserve currency of the world, you know, and that's why like the, the, the next battle is like probably with China because that's the next reserve currency. Um, no, so that is the next the, battle. The, the yuan is the yuan versus the dollar is the, is the next, uh, the next big battle. But, but yeah, you're right. Like it, it's to the extent that we um, c- continue. Now we, we can conscientiously, um, be in disagreement with all this stuff, but yeah, like a, a, unless you're willing to like completely extract yourself from it, you're still you're still contributing to it. Yeah. Um, and and but that's know, how they fucked us. Oh no, no, right, right, right. They made it to where it's so damn near impossible, if not impossible, to be part of it. It's it's the same it's the same thing. So like on the flip side of that, so on the one hand, you have the you're responsible for all this death and carnage by extension right because you're part of this Mm -hmm. whole system that is perpetuated by that and is also like uh responsible for that um the same thing happens where you get this like elizabeth warren barack obama like you didn't build that sort of thing like it doesn't matter what you do Mm -hmm. you couldn't have done it without the roads or without the internet or without the electricity or whatever the thing is that they'll say like well you couldn't have done that without 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 tax dollars like but yeah but it's like well you didn't really fucking give us a choice like what what i would have to do is be born like on the dirt somewhere which you claim to own all the fucking land too so i guess i don't even own that like like what the fuck am i like at, at what point am i not either responsible 
or it, so so to, to that extent like yeah i get what you're saying that like when you do certain things that are not necessary and you participate in whether it's netflix or you know those, those you know go to walmart it, 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 go to those sporting little events. incrementals yeah yeah, yeah right 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 the, the, those little incidental things that are uh that are like uh, luxuries or whatever you want to call them yeah that that's but like you know i'm, I'm sorry i'm you know i'm gonna eat i'm not gonna starve myself to death so that i don't oh no for sure for sure yeah. I'm, i so, mean but, <laughs> but 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 what you're saying is true like they, they've kind of created this thing where it's like you can't help but be part of this like cycle of oppression Mass destruction and destruction <laughs> exactly yeah but it comes back down to sun tzu sun tzu very well said take the uh and i'm paraphrasing because i don't remember the exact quote but he said take the the weapons of your enemy and turn them against them use whatever you can you know yes we're 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 on youtube we're putting this out on youtube we are turning somebody i mean nico watched our stuff and look now he's here (laughs) right 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 so somebody out there is watching this stuff and they're learning stuff and they're thinking about stuff so we are turning their Mm -hmm. weapon against them Mm -hmm. guys what is the time Right, yeah. it's been good. We've got we're approaching two hours now, and I made yeah. a promise to Nico on Sunday. <laughs> you shouldn't have <laughs> made me that promise. Up. I was here. I was here for nine everything. minutes to go. So <laughs> right, we're, right. We're nine but uh, so I want to wrap up with with my quote for yeah. today. And what I'm going to uh, do, and first of all, if you like this, share, uh, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, go check out the store. Uh, links are below. As are uh, my Twitter, my Facebook. Chad's Twitter and Nico's Twitter, if you guys want to check everybody out. Um, so we'll st- So that's out of the way. The quote today is, is I think, a, an important one. Um, and not only by what it, for what it says, but by who it's said from. It was, it's a quote by Rajneesh, who was a cult leader um, in the early 80s who started a community in the United States. And he's loosely a Hindu-ish, but he had like different uh, beliefs. He would eventually be known as Osho. And what he taught was to reject the government and find your own spirituality. He taught freedom along with individual experience with religion. So they kicked him the hell out of the country. <laughs> they, they said, oh, hell no, because he got a bunch of people together, different cultures, different religions, different That's scary people. shit for them. Right. And they were terrified. <laughs> That's way more scary than if you just got a bunch of Hindus doing, <laughs> right. doing the same thing. Yeah. So, so this is what Rajneesh had to say about freedom. It's one of my favorite quotes. And there are going to be people that say that some of his people did this and they did that and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. They obviously had a problem with him. If you want, there's a, There was a, a documentary about him out for a while. But they went after this dude with a vengeance. So I don't believe any of their bullshit. So, but this is what he said about freedom. He said, true freedom is always spiritual. It has something to do with your innermost being, which cannot be chained, handcuffed, or put into a jail. And I also want to point, I wrote an article about Harriet Tubman um, probably about two years ago. Right, and yeah, I remember that one. We, yeah, we covered this a little bit when we started tonight, but... What I called that that article about her was um, a slave to no one. Harriet Tubman was born a slave, but she was never a slave. She didn't have the mentality of a slave. She knew right out of the gate she was free. Now, other people argued with her, and she did everything in her power to free herself and free everyone around her. And when you have the spiritual cojones to stand up on your own two feet and say, I am free, and I am linked to God, and there is no master outside of God, and I don't personally believe that God's a master, but if you're going to have a master, that's the only one you get. If you say that, and you say it with conviction, and you stand on spiritual grounds and say, I own myself, and I am going to be free, and God is going to help me get there. There is no force in this world or any other one that will stop you. Mm. Nope. So I want to thank both Chad and Nico for coming on this today and I this has been a good one. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks a lot guys. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Oh, uh, likewise.